بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and on behalf of the Palestine Information Network we welcome you to another virtual iftar session for our fasting until liberation صيام حتى التحرير we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts this from us in our scale of deeds, makes it a means for the liberation of Masjid al-Aqsa that we inshallah can witness and also make it a means of our upliftment of the sunnah of the Nabi of Allah and a means for our salvation in this world as well as the year after. We look forward to getting your regular feedback on what keeps you going for this fasting and also from your own unique community if you will be willing to host this particular initiative physically so that we can grow grow this initiative, get more hearts connected to Masjid al-Aqsa, get more people fasting. Let us strategize with you. Do get in touch with the Palestine Information Network via our various networks so that inshallah we can come together to strategize and grow this initiative, particularly in Gauteng and surrounding provinces. We bring to you an important energizing nasiha and this from none other than the late Mulana Ihsan Hendricks, a nasiha that he had delivered in the year 2017 wherein he had spoken about the role that collaborators from within play in dampening and thwarting victory for Masjid al-Aqsa and Palestine. He gave this nasiha in the context of Donald Trump at that stage, 2017, while he was still alive, uh, Molana Ihsan Hendricks, Donald Trump had announced his recognition of Jerusalem al-Quds as the capital of the state of Israel as he had seen it, seen it. And in that context, spoken of the role of various Muslim regimes and their role in collaborating with the Zionist enemy. We listen to that nasiha and we listen to the encouragement of Mulana Ihsan Hendricks today to once again rekindle our deeper understanding of Masjid al-Aqsa and how we really need to ever intensify our efforts for this blessed cause. <laughs> كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالم إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Remember at the time that the Crusades, a first crusade, a second crusade, a third crusade, and smaller crusades after that, the biggest aspiration of Richard Talbul Asad, Richard the Lionheart was, he needed to return back to Europe with the keys of the city of Jerusalem. Like classically there is a saying in Arabic that says, لِكُلِّ فِرْعَوْنٍ مُوسَى To every tyrant like Pharaoh, there is a Musa. And so, Richard Lionheart, Qalbul Asad, had to face the resistance of Salahuddin Ayyubi. And on the eve of his return to Britain, Salahuddin told him, the keys of Bayt al-Maqdis remains in Bayt al-Maqdis. You know and I know in our own readings of history, a shaheed Imam Hassan al-Banna said, whenever al-Masjid al-Aqsa is free and liberated, the Muslim ummah will be at its best conditions. But whenever Masjid al-Aqsa is under occupation and under siege, you can examine the condition of the Ummah. It will be at the worst. 
This is where we are today. It is as though there is a bankruptcy of leadership in the Ummah. At one stage during the time of the Crusades, and I quoted this example maybe a year before, the lady who entered Masjid al-Umawi during the time that the Salibiyun kept al-Masjid al-Aqsa for 85 years under siege. No adhan, no iqama, no salah. How she cut her hair, plaited it, went into the masjid. When the imam ascended on the member, she threw the plaited hair onto the member and asked the imam, أَلَيْسَ فِيكُمْ رَجُلٌ يُحَرِّرُ الْمَسْجِدَ الْأَقْصَى Is there not a man amongst you who can liberate al-masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak? My dear brothers, Jama'at al-Muslimin, what can be the worst case scenario? Let's assume for a moment, and Allah protect, that this ceremonial pronouncement by Donald Trump as much as we all are critical of Donald Trump, including myself, I believe that Donald Trump is not alone in this announcement that he made. Donald Trump is enjoying good support, good collaboration by prominent Muslim Arab leaders. And so at one stage we had to focus on the external enemy. Today it is min abna'i jildatina, our own skin that collaborates. It is our own, in our own ranks that the khiyana is coming. Who is giving the Zionists the idea? You know, in Madinat al-Quds, the demographics have been changed to such an extent, there's a small little suburb next to Madinat al-Quds known as Abu Dis. Shockingly, some of the prominent Arab leaders are suggesting to the Zionists, give the Palestinians that small suburb, Abu Dis, and let them declare that as a capital of Palestine. This is the comfort that Donald Trump is taking. This is the comfort that Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu is taking. The comfort that they enjoy in terms of the very direct collaboration with prominent Muslim Arab leaders. And at one particular stage, people try to caution us. Be careful how you speak, because we've got to go for Hajj. We've got to go for Umrah. Hajj and Umrah, Ruknun min arkani Islam. It does not belong to the monarch of Saudi Arabia. It is the Rukun of the Deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That does not and should not deter us to be critical of the political misdemeanors of these leaders. And by the way, for me as an individual, to be very frank about it, I've already been placed on the list of terror. You have seen the most recent terror list by Saudi Arabia. I've already been placed on there. And so that does not deter us the least. We are at a time right now that we cannot compromise. And by the way, our South African experience tells us that we have seen the worst of apartheid. We fought and we struggled for this liberation. And so, the identity that we have built in this country is not going to deter us to be critical of anything that will potentially destroy the identity of Islam. Worst case scenario, if this moves to the legal phase, and last night in Azadwal I gave an example. It's not impossible that it can move in that particular direction. That this ceremonial announcement 
begins to take some legal form. The Zionists have succeeded in more than one case. They have succeeded. Example, today Muslims even believe that the Jewish community have a rightful place at what they call Ha'itul Mabka, the Wailing Hall. Whilst we believe it is Ha'itul Buraq, Juz'un la yatajazza' min al-Masjid al-Aqsa, it is an integral part of al-Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. But in 1928, August 1928, a group of Zionists came and they started wailing. Even some other Jews asked them, why are you wailing? They said, don't you know that this is the last remaining archaeological evidence of the Temple of Solomon. Those ulama who stood up and who initiated Thawratul Buraq, the revolution of the Buraq wall, they were then executed in 1930 and the British mandate. But from then till now, a great percentage of the world believe the Jews have a rightful place in front of Ha'itul Buraq. Let me give you another example. Designers have de designed a law. <clears throat> I may have given the example here before. Imlakul Ghiyab, ownership in absentia. The Palestinians call it in Arabic, Imlakul Ghiyab, ownership in absentia. Legalized by the Knesset. It's law. How? How is it that over a period of the last 50 years, the Zionists have taken away many awqaf of the Muslims? Masajid, Madaris. There's almost a list of close to 450 awqaf establishments that was taken away. When the ulama go to the court to defend it is a waqaf, the judge would ask them, according to your sharia, what is the definition of waqaf? So the definition of waqaf is Allahu huwa al-malik Allah is the owner So very insultingly The Zionist judge would ask them Fa'ayna al-malik If you say Allah is the owner, where is he? So he is absent And because he is absent That is through that law We have taken And so The worst case scenario If the Zionists move towards Taising that the state or the city of Al-Quds become the capital, it means the Zionists will have a solid backbone. It means the vision of Zionism, the state, the capital, and then of course going for the temple will be achieved. It means Muqaddasat Islamiyah, the sacred places of the Muslims, Muqaddasat al masihiyya even the sacred places of the Christian community will become the first victims of that. And now you can imagine what will be the future of the sacred holy places, not of the Palestinians, of the Ummah of Islam. Brothers, Jamaat al Muslimin, my appeal here today is that. Awareness is not enough for us. I foresee more darker days coming our way. I foresee more complexities around the Palestinian issue. We have to accept our responsibility as an integral part of the Ummah of the Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam Palestine sloganization is not enough the Ruh Biddam Navdika Ya Aqsa is good but not enough the paraphernalia of the Palestinian scarves is not enough the occasional Facebook social media participation that we have on the Palestinian issue 
is not enough. They can never be enough for as long as Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, Madinah Al-Quds remains under occupation. And yes, we have to renew the call to the Ummah and say, ما أخذت من هذه الأمة بقوة لن ترد إلى هذه الأمة إلا بنفس القوة. What has been taken away from this Ummah with that power and that strength will not be returned to the Ummah except if the same strength and power is used. And that is by no means an irresponsible pronouncement that I am making. It means that we cannot be to relax. We cannot say that is only the responsibility of the Palestinians or the responsibility of the Arab world. No, collectively we all have that responsibility. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all. Hafidhakum Allahu wa ra'akum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Wa barakallahu feekum. And we are indeed bil yaqeen natayaqqan min Allah. غدا سنصلي في المسجد الأقصى المحرر. Tomorrow we are going to make salah in the liberated al-Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak in sha Allah. Shukran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi taala wa barakatuh.